Hey Internet, today is April 1st and that means this is going to be a more fun video than usual as I somewhat seriously attempt to answer the ancient conundrum. Why is it that the left can't meme? Because it's a very common problem that leftist memes and political comics are generally pretty much unfunny and bad. And I'm certainly not the first person to point this out, but the real question is, why is this? What is it specifically about leftist memes that makes them so unappealing, so preachy, and completely lacking in good humor? Now, normally, basic psychology would have a very easy answer to this. You find things funnier if you agree with the basic premise behind them that the joke is poking fun at. People tend to get irritated by political snark for an opposing ideology. So that's that, right? Case closed, all you filthy rhinoids just don't like their lefty memes because you don't like their premise, right? Well, no. With leftist online memes, I've found this to not be the case. For the simple reason that with most leftist memes, even if you subvert them and make them either a centrist meme or a rhydoid meme, or insert whatever political ideology here, etc. meme, most leftist memes are still not that funny. For instance, take a look at this. The word is Republican. H-Y-P-O-C-R-I-T-E. Republican. Correct. How is that exactly supposed to be funny? What is the, what's the joke here? I'm looking for the joke. But the real problem here is that it can be easily subverted to mean the exact opposite of what it is saying. For instance, you could just switch it from Republican to Democrat or Libertarian or pretty much anything, and it doesn't actually change what it is saying. It's pretty much just enemy team bad, and that's it. There's no punchline. So this comic seems to serve no other purpose than to signal that the person who posted the meme is a leftist, and the punchline is other major party bad. If you're a rightoid, you might enjoy the subversion to the right here, but you have to admit that this subversion is still pretty stupid, because the meme in general is just a stupid format. There's, there's no joke, it's just people I don't like bad. And the premise behind it is very stupid too, because this wouldn't actually happen in any kind of spelling bee. I mean, let's just be reasonable here. What would this, what context could this actually occur? Never. This would never happen. But of course, that's just one comic. How about some others? Let's see if we can spot a pattern here. I don't care if the speech guidelines say no politics, I'm citing Marx. Oh boy. Now again, this kind of has the same problem. It can be easily subverted into a right-wing meme, and the result still isn't very funny, aside from the fact that it's a subversion. There's no real point, it's just, hey, look at me, I'm a leftist. And the subverted version is just, hey, look at me, I'm a rightist. Okay. Pat on the back, thumbs up for you, thanks for the Reddit gold, kind stranger. Once again, we see the problem of no punchline. The primary purpose is just to signal to others what their political beliefs are. So how about one from a more well-known artist? A more political comic from Horsey. We seem to have Trump here, whining about January 6th, and that's it. Yeah, that's it. There's no joke. Again, same problem. There's no real point here other than signaling the fact that he is left-leaning by pointing out how Orange Man is bad. There is no punchline here beyond signaling what your beliefs are, while also signaling disdain for those you don't like. And on the topic of leftist political comics, Horsey is a fantastic example of this very simple little problem, the I am silly argument, where the entire comic is basically just a ridiculous straw man to make the people you don't like look silly. And there's no punchline beyond that. Opposing side is acting silly and irrational, and the punchline of the joke is person is acting silly and irrational, which isn't a real punchline. And that kind of brings me to this image that does a fairly good job comparing and contrasting right-wing political comics and left-wing political comics, using, of course, Horsey again as an example. In the Horsey comic, we have Masterminds, and it shows a MAGA guy and a Q-Boomer standing side by side, looking ridiculous. And that's it. As the image says, ideological opponents, right-wing gunobers, shown as inhuman freaks. It's not actually going to attempt to make any reasonable argument against gun rights. Horsey simply paints gun owners as looking silly. And that's it. No punchline, look how stupid and silly they are. And this is where we see our first major problem. The idea itself, gun rights, is not actually being mocked. It is mocking the people you don't like. It is mocking the people you disagree with, but it is not actually making a solid point against the idea. Contrast this with the rightoid comic. It is not making fun of the person making the argument, it is making fun of the idea. This is the classic muff fighter planes and nukes arguments that you can't possibly overthrow the government with AR-15s, so you should therefore give the government your AR-15s. Oh, top mind idea there. The truth, of course, is that in order for laws to be enforced in a country you are occupying, they must be enforced in person, and therefore an armed population is able to better resist tyranny 
society in a way that an unarmed population cannot. Tanks, nukes, and whatnot are actually extremely inefficient for enforcing laws in person. The meme is just showing an example of this in action, which is brilliant because it's taking what is actually a pretty complex point in favor of gun rights and simplifying it down to just a few sentences and images, in a way that is punchy and funny. However, this is not the only common problem with a lot of leftist memes. Another issue is the kind of memes that seem to just post their ideology and pass it off as a meme by including some imagery. So pray for me as I embark on a journey to read this crap. The capitalist state exists to reinforce the property relations the capitalist class employs to exploit the working class. The institutional and financial power of the capitalist class is too overwhelming for mere vote to overcome. Those who accumulate capital under capitalism with it also accumulate the power to coerce the people in government, only through the majority using their true democratic power <laughs> Again, where is the joke? How does this count as anything? It's just a bunch of words representing Marxist ideology, with Karl Marx wearing some sunglasses. Where's the effort? Where's the humor? I don't see it. If you see this meme posted, all it's telling you is that the person who posted it is a Marxist. Or here's another example of this problem. You beat me up over a hat? Well, the justification of violence in this scenario is debatable. My aggression towards you clearly does not stem from the fact that you're wearing a And this is where things start to take a turn for the more ridiculous. Not only is there yet again no real punchline other than enemy team bad, rather than it being an attempt at a joke, it is instead just justification for violence through basically what amounts to nothing more than a really stupid straw man argument. It is the classic false dichotomy of everyone to the right of me as we told we hit wall. And this unfortunately is not uncommon with leftist memes. Violence is okay so long as you have the correct trademark opinions trademark. And at this point I think I can go ahead and call out the main problem. The reason leftist memes tend to suck is because leftist memes are based on moralization and virtue signaling, while most other political memes are based on absurdist humor. Going back to Stone Toss, even if you're a leftist who has a seething hatred of Stone Toss and everything he represents, you have to look at this comic and admit it's pretty punchy. The same is not the case with most leftist memes. They are simply, look at me, I am a leftist, and you are bad because you are not. And that's it. No punchline. It's like leftist memes primarily exist to signal one's status as a leftist rather than to be funny. Wow, look at me, I have the correct opinions, my beliefs completely align with my sociology college professor, I am such a good person, I am such a good citizen, you should want to be a good citizen just like me. That's what I see when I see a lot of these leftist memes. And all of it seems strangely familiar, like I've seen images that also showcase a disturbingly similar problem. Ah yes, that's right, in communist propaganda. There is nothing here other than showcasing how much of a good citizen you are by worshipping the dear communist leader. As you can see, as he is in his gold, amazing halo. Truly, best Korea. Or how about the more violent types? Welp, communist propaganda has that one covered too. Or how about the ones where you have to embark on a long and arduous journey to read their meme? Yep, they had those too. The purpose of these is not actually to be funny, but rather to show you what you are supposed to think by showing the side that they do not like, the outer party, as the evil villain demon gods, while showcasing leftists as the virtuous collectives. The lack of any punchline is not a bug, it's a feature. And so I've come to the conclusion that leftist memes are actually not really intended to be funny, but rather they are intended to more or less be an evolution of the propaganda we saw from leftists back in the days when Marxist-Leninism was still much of a thing, and even still today in North Korea, to some extent. They do not exist to tell you why you should believe something, like other non-leftist political memes and political comics might say, but rather they exist to tell you what you are supposed to think, while implying that you are a terrible person for not thinking this way. So as it turns out, the preachiness and unfunniness of these memes is not a bug either. It is simply propaganda, because modern leftism relies entirely on moral arguments as opposed to rational ones. And how does this end? Well, as I posted earlier, the purpose of propaganda, at least in its late stage form, is not to inform you or deceive you or even manipulate you. It's to humiliate you. Its purpose is to be so outlandish, so ridiculous and so blatantly untrue and yet totally undeniable in order to reinforce the power of the state. The Soviets referred to this as hyperrealism. That is, the state of everyone saying things that are completely false and that they know to be false, but which they cannot deny. The supermarket shelves are empty and bread lines stretch around the corner, but the newspapers report that the year's agricultural quotas have been exceeded once again, and then everyone is forced to repeat this lie, and thus they become complicit in it. It is a system of total social humiliation. Anyways, that's all I have to say for now. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like, subscribe, and all that. Till next time.